Today on the Locked On Blues podcast, St. Louis Blues might just be a bad team. Uh, we've seen incredible inconsistency from the Blues this year, but they are amidst yet another losing streak, and this one is coming in absolutely embarrassing fashion, giving up six goals in the last three games and losing all three. Of course, Jordan Bennington has been on his worst behavior, displaying some embarrassing antics. Um, and not really backing it up with his play at all whatsoever. I'm going to be talking about everything that's been going down in the losing streak, Jordan Bennington, all that stuff and more. Should be an interesting episode to say the least. Make sure you stay tuned. You're Locked On Blues, your daily podcast on the St. Louis Blues. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so for those of you that don't know, if you somehow um, have been living under a rock the past few weeks, it has been a rather up and down season for the St. Louis Blues. They started out winning three in a row proceeded to then lose eight straight in regulation and looked absolutely horrible doing so. And then they decided to give us some life. They won seven in a row. Everything looked good. And since then, it's been it's been bad. <laughs> um, they have won one game since then and lost all the rest. They now find themselves sitting at 11 and 14, I believe, uh, on the season. 11, 14 and 0, good enough for sixth place in the Central. Everything has been going wrong at different times. You know, the goaltending had been good up until recently. I don't know. This episode is going to be all over the place, sort of more of a a rant-style episode rather than a structured uh, three-segment thing. But don't worry. I've come prepared. I've got lots of stats, lots of receipts, lots of fun stuff to dissect because we're over a quarter of the way into the year at this point, and I feel like it can no longer be chalked chalked up to, yeah, you know, this team's just inconsistent or... You know, wait till they wait till they figure it out. No, I I think this is not. I think this is the least fun I have ever had watching the St. Louis Blues this season. Unfortunately, um, for a multitude of reasons, and I just want to get into the 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 biggest reason right away. Uh, I'm sick and tired of of Jordan Bennington's antics. Um, they were funny at first, I think. You know, the, the the quotes during the cup run, the whole I'm not nervous, all that stuff is great. Jordan Bennington's personality is great. And the fact that when he's feeling confident, he plays, you know, he plays with that confidence and he plays really well um, and he's able to back it up. But the thing that really rubs me the wrong way that Bennington has the tendency to do is he pulls out those antics when he's losing. You know, it's one thing if if you're a a, a Brad Marchand type that's gonna chirp you when you're winning. You know, Marchand with his with his taunts and stuff. He, he'll do it when the Bruins are winning, and that's annoying to go against because you're like, oh man, he's so good, he's so annoying, and they're beating us. With Jordan Bennington, he pulls off these antics and he kind of just makes a fool out of himself because more than likely the Blues are losing in the game. Um, when he does it, you know, the, the one against Zucker is a perfect example. He throws a cheap shot uh, with Zucker going around the net. And not only was Bennington losing at that point, he proceeded to give up even more goals, um, including one to Jason Zucker, which is like the ultimate embarrassment, you know, giving him the last laugh. Um, and overall, it just feels like like he's that, that kid in gym class that, you know, starts starts taking cheap shots the second that the team starts losing. You know, it, it's it's not. I don't know. It's not something that I think you should be proud of if you're the Blues or if you're Jordan Bennington. And Craig Berube has indicated that he is in agreement with me um, on that front. You know, he said that Bennington's antics have to stop. <clears throat> that they provide no. No impact towards the game, no impact to winning, et cetera, et cetera. Um, as my cat runs and knocks over a bunch of stuff, apologies if that got picked up on the broadcast, um, on the audio, I should say. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's like 
you know, I, I hate logging into Twitter and seeing people calling Jordan Binnington a crybaby and stuff because, you know what, frankly, they're right. Um, if he backed up his antics with winning play, it would be a completely different narrative. You know, he would be, he would be hated, but like in a good way, like sort of in the way that, like I said earlier, Brad Marchand is hated. Um, I don't know. <sighs> Overall, I think Jordan Bennington's antics are a uh, reflection of, of the season as a whole. And he gets frustrated and he takes it out through those ways. But, you know, he then goes out and and gives up an absolute sinker, lets up five goals and like twenty shots in his next game for the apps for his absolute worst performance of the season. Um, look, it's getting getting harder and harder to, to diagnose what's gone wrong with this with this team this year. Um, in this upcoming second segment, I'm going to be continuing to talk about Jordan Bennington and his struggles as of late. Um, and yeah. If I have time, I'll talk about the the upcoming game between the Blues and Islanders. But based on the time that I'm recording this, it's probably gonna be, the episode's probably going to be going out during the game. So I'll keep it brief in that sense. But before I get into any of that, I want to tell you guys about Simply Safe. At Locked On Blues, I believe home should be where you and your family feel safest, especially over the holidays. This season, you can give yourself and your family the gift of peace and protection with the number one rated home security system, Simply Safe. And right now, Simply Safe is offering Locked On Blues listeners 40% off a new security system. Here's why I love it. I'm an anxious person. I'll be the first to admit. I don't like hearing things go bump in the night. It'll, it'll get me out of bed like that. I'm a light sleeper. Um, but with the home security system, you can have all of those, those nerves put to rest. Simply Safe was named the best home security system in two, of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report, which is the third year in a row. Back to back to back, Michael Jordan style. In an emergency, 24 7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get a higher priority police response. 24 7 professional monitoring service costs under $1 a day, which is less than half the price of the traditional home security system. So don't miss the chance to save big on my favorite security system. Get 40% off any new system at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. That is simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. There is no safe like Simply Safe. We'll be right back with the second half of today's episode. All right. I want to circle back to the Jordan Bennington thing a little bit. I got a little bit off track there. I uh, got a little bit distracted by my <laughs> my cat running around the room and knocking things over. Um, but, but yeah, kid kid in gym class. Like, like, like picture. Picture the biggest sore loser you knew growing up, you know, whether it be uh, a kid you played against in, in town baseball or town hockey, you know, the kid that the kid that was maybe a little bit bigger than everyone and started throwing cheap shots when his team was losing or whatever, you know, the kid that the kid that would unplug the Wii when when he got a, a, a bad role in, in Super Mario Party or you, you get the picture, the kid that no one really liked playing with all that much because if he was losing in street hockey, he would start uh, smacking you in the ankles with a stick. You know, the kid that, like, yeah, you got along with him, and he was pretty darn good, but when he was off his game, he, he would be a sore loser. That's Jordan Bennington. I hate to say it. I love watching Jordan Bennington play. I love when his confidence and his swagger turns into good play, and I love when this sore loser mentality is is reflects itself in winning, and he looks kind of like a, a, a badass doing it with the whole, you know, do I look nervous comments, and and stuff from the cup run, you know, when he was pulling that stuff, that was fun. But when he's losing, my God, it makes the Blues look pathetic. It makes him look pathetic. It, it's just like you really want to be that guy that gets thrown out of the game because you're chirping at the bench after you've already been pulled? Like, is that really what, what Jordan Benningson wants his legacy to be? You know, it's it's frustrating because it makes him look bad. It makes the Blues look bad, and it's a distraction for his teammates. You know, his teammates are probably rolling their eyes like, oh, man, here we go again. Binner is uh, Binner pulling his, his you-know-what. And like I said, when he's winning, that's great. And that's the thing is I don't think he's ever going to change because I think it fuels him. You know, you look back at the Nazem Kadri incident where he threw the water bottle, which got, you know, for the record, completely blown out of proportion. But still, he, he's always been this player 
You know, he's always been the guy that's going to be, you know, in the headlines as a bit of an instigator. He loves the booze of opposing crowds. This, this is him. This is who he is as a player. But when he's losing and when he's struggling, it is so embarrassing to just see these clips all over Twitter. And, and you know, these players, they use Twitter. They use social media, maybe not as religiously as some of us, but they're not, they're not you know, completely oblivious to it. Jordan Bennington knows that his he's going to get his name trending on Twitter. And you look at how he played in the very next game, and it's like, it's, it's obvious, you know, against New York. I think that was by far his worst game of the season. The Blues absolutely could have beat the New York Rangers. The Rangers looked horrid out there. They looked like they, they didn't belong in the game at all. Um, I don't, I know we don't love fancy stats here on this podcast all that much. Um, but there's this fun little fancy stat called expected goals, which just says like, Hey, here's how many goals the Rangers would have had if there was just an average goalie in that for the blues. And I believe their expected goals for that game was like two. I think the Rangers had two expected goals for that game, uh, against Jordan Bennington, maybe one, he allowed six goals on 24 shots. And it's pathetic. He played really, 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 really poorly. And for the first time, you know, I really think you could look at Jordan Banks and say, yeah, this loss was on you, you know? Um, and it's tough because the rest of the season, you know, it's not like the team has been playing super well. It's not like, you know, you, you could look at any one aspect of the team other than like the offense throughout that losing streak. Overall, I just think it's been um, – you know, the team has been underperforming. But this game, the Blues come out and have an incredibly dominant second period, one of their best periods of the entire season against the New York Rangers, outscoring them 3-1. to one. And then you come into the third period, and Jordan Mington just hasn't, doesn't have his composure anymore. And you can tell it's, it's, it's a residual from the game before when he got pulled and, and got a freaking 10-minute misconduct for inciting. Like, you got to be... Oh man, you gotta really be under the ref skin to get a, a ten minute misconduct for something that hasn't been called in years. You know, it, it's it's oh, man. I, I know I'm rambling. I'm frustrated. I'm really frustrated. You know, it's 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 embarrassing to be like the the laughing stock of the league like that. And Jordan Binnington is spearheading it. You know, not only has the season just from a hockey standpoint been so up and down and inconsistent. It's like now we gotta now we gotta deal with. You know all the all the talking heads looking at Jordan Bennington and laughing and calling him a crybaby and this and that and whether or not you agree, Bennington was horrible in the New York game. Bennington was pretty bad in the in the Pittsburgh game where he got yanked. I have been his number one defender this year. I think Jordan Bennington has had a really really strong regular season up until recently. He has not been the problem at all. Um, in fact, he's been arguably the brightest spot on this Blues team. Uh, all season, but lately he has been the the darkest spot of the team this season. You know, between his antics and his play, it's like, man, I, I I'm starting to look at that that long term contract that he has, and and I'm starting to question it a little bit. You know, I'm starting to question if if may, maybe the play is there, but but personality wise, consistency wise, I don't know if if putting up with another couple of years of, of Jordan Bennington's antics and his inconsistency is the best for this team. Um, that being said, when he is at his best, Jordan Bennington is an otherworldly goaltender. And and that's what you're going to get with him. You know, you're going to get the, the pros and the cons. He is not going to be the best version of himself. If he doesn't play with that edge, if he doesn't play with the antics that he plays with, if you tell him to suppress those antics, he's going to struggle because he plays on that emotion. So it's a double-edged sword. Like I said, when he's playing well, it's great. You know, it's great to watch him taunt the the, the opposition when he's playing well, and he does it sort of like in a gamesmanship way. Um, but man, when the Blues are losing and he's struggling, it's like, come on, bro. You're, you're, you're going to get yourself thrown out of a game for chirping at the bench, chirping a guy that just scored on you, got you thrown out of the game. Like, that's, that's not a good look. I don't know. In this upcoming third and final segment, I'm going to be previewing tonight's matchup between the Blues and Islanders, talking about what the heck the Blues could possibly do to maybe sneak away with a win against the Islanders. Make sure you stay tuned. All right, so by the time you guys are listening to this episode, the Blues are probably uh, in the middle of the game against the Islanders, so I'm going to try to keep this part pretty brief. Uh, Thomas Grice is in net. The line combos are a little bit different. Um, Sorokin is in net for the Islanders. He's been one of the best goaltenders of the year. Um, 
And the Blues have their work cut out for them, plain and simple. It is going to be a difficult matchup against a difficult team on the road, the second night of a back-to-back. And the Blues are amidst their, I honestly would consider this their their biggest struggle of the season. Let's let's go through them, some stats. I promised you guys some stats. I got them for you. Um, these stats come courtesy of Blues Views on Twitter. Shout out Blues Views. Uh, since November 23rd, so over the Blues' last seven games, the Blues are 1-6, and six, which is good enough for last in the NHL. They have given up 2.86, or no, they've scored 2.86 goals per game, which is in the bottom half of the NHL, 19th overall. Here's a fun one. Goals against per game. We'll give you a second to guess. It's like Dora the Explorer. What do you think over the last seven games? How many goals do you think the St. Louis Blues have given up per game? All right, you, you got your number? 5.29. The Blues are giving up over five goals a game since November 23rd. That's seven games. That's a big stretch. It's not just like a, you know a couple games where they've dropped the ball. They have been horrible. Goal differential, minus 17. Last in the NHL. Power play, 25%. Not that bad. Only 15th in the NHL, he says, full of sarcasm. Penalty kill. Oh, boy. 50%. Blues take a penalty. There's a 50% chance they're giving up a goal over these last seven games. This is the first time since the 2006-2007 season that the St. Louis Blues have 14 regulation losses through their first 25 games. And this is the first time since October of 1996 that the St. Louis Blues have allowed six-plus goals in three straight games. This ain't no 2019 Blues. This isn't just a, a ragtag bunch of stars that look good on paper that need to figure it out. No, this, this might just be a bad team. And my worry is that they're not quite bad enough to, to profit off of being a bad team. You know, my worry is they're going to figure it out a little bit. They're going to start playing a little bit better. They're going to finish just outside of a playoff spot, pick at like 17 overall in the draft, come back next year with the same roster filled with big big contracts but not so big that you feel like you need to get rid of them and rinse and repeat jordan Kyrie, robert thomas great pieces for the future you know they're not they're not it's not too little too late for the blues but a lot of money locked up in that defense a lot of money locked up in jordan bennington a lot of money locked up in a couple of older forwards the blues should not be witnessing their window slam close like this just yet i think change needs to happen but before we get into those conversations Let's talk about the Islanders game. What can the Blues do? <sighs> Defense, goaltending. Thomas Grice needs to reset the momentum um, in terms of goaltending for the St. Louis Blues. It is incredibly, incredibly frustrating when you're when you're a team watching your goaltender just fail to bail you out in games. And I think for the Blues to to regain some sort of success, they need Thomas Grice to have a good game tonight. Um, I don't even know if I'm expecting a or not. I'm not expecting a Blues win. Let's be honest. I don't even know if a Blues win is like. I, I think they can lose and we can still be satisfied with the result as long as they don't give up like seven goals. Um, need to see a reset from the goaltending. Like I said, offense has been good. It needs to continue to roll. It needs to continue to play well. Defense needs to just be a little bit better. And hey, maybe if the offense can play this well and the defense and goaltending can be where it was before this recent losing streak, maybe the Blues can string some wins together. Who knows? That being said, that is all the time I have for you guys today. Make sure you hit that follow or subscribe button, whatever podcast platform you're listening to me on. That way you never miss a new episode. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you can see my beautiful face. You can see my cat. You can see me getting frustrated and mad and all that fun stuff. Um, follow Lockdown Blues on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow me on Twitter at Josh Hyman NHL. Thanks for making Lockdown Blues your first listen. As always, let's go Blues.